for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is called to order at 8.01. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Vaughn Crooks? Here. Howie? Here. Lefevre? Here. McLeod? Here. Stack? Here. Taylor? Piper? Here. Quorum present, Mayor Stack? Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Stack. Clark. I would make a motion that we excuse uh, Council Person Typer. Support. Taylor. Taylor? Taylor. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. The uh, chair um, would entertain a motion for the council for the reading of, um, and approval of the minutes. I would so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Appointments, zoning board. Um, I just have to get to there first, please. Uh, tonight, I would like to appoint or reappoint Frank Mazzella to the ZBA, his term. Uh, actually is expires 9-1 of 2015. Oh, so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Howie? Yes. Lefevre? Yes. McLeod? Yes. Stack? Abstain. Piper? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Motion carried, Mayor Stack. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no uh, under authority c city commissions, boards, and committees. We have um, nothing at this point. General B1, 33rd District Court, and I'll defer to uh, Councilman Lefevre in regards to fine cost fees for J July 2012. Thank you, Mayor Stack. I make a motion to receive and um, place and file the fines, costs, and fees for July 2012, which shows the city of Trenton owing the district court $12,089.76. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you, Councilman Lefevre. Uh, B2 is the Chrysler Group LLC application for amended IFT 2011-293. Madam Mayor, I would move that we receive this and refer it to administration support. Okay, it's been moved and su supported to receive it and our uh, Refer to administration. Is there any discussion? I have a question, if I could Council please. Councilwoman McLeod. Directed to Councilperson Typer, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Is this an amendment of what we revisited or what we looked at a while ago? This is somewhat consistent with the budget discussion we had, that there was another project that they weren't ready to tell us about. Looks like they're ready to tell us about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. We're under groups and organizations. C1, the Trenton Rotary Club, is requesting the use of City Hall for a fundraiser to be held on uh, October 18th. It is a murder mystery. I would so move. It's been moved. Support. Support for discussion. Councilwoman McLeod. Yes. At a risk of sounding like the bad guy all the time when there's a rotary issue on the agenda, I will be requesting a roll call vote. And I would say this, that um, I don't think that we should give special treatment to any group. And I don't think the rotary is any exception. The idea that we're going to start allowing groups to use City Hall, um, you know, without leasing the building and without insuring the event creates liability for the city of Trenton. And so I do not believe that this is the kind of thing that we can engage in or should engage in. And I would also like to point out that I understand that this event is already being advertised. So it really is a good idea to ask for permission before you start advertising an event. Okay, is there any other discussion? Madam Mayor, is there any criteria that we typically would, would have for allowing such events? I know the last one was what, three, four years ago? We, we have had groups that have used the uh, City Hall for different events when it comes down to, we had the, um, the event that uh, Noel Jackson had for his first gala. Uh, that was here at City Hall. That's been many years ago. But um, the one thing that we do require if a group is going to use the facility 
is um, to pay for the attendant to open up and close the building. Now, from what I understand, because I talked to my husband about this tonight before I got here, um, they are not using any of the, they're not going to go into any of the offices. They were going to basically use the lobby and the council chambers. That's from what I've heard. Councilman McCall. Are they going to insure the event separately or is this going to fall under the guise of the city's insurance um, the for Rotary this has, private event? The Rotary has insurance that they can um, insure it and also put the city of Trenton as additionally insured. So is that part of this proposal? Um, I'm sure that the, it would, it's a part of uh, any of our proposals because we always make sure it's insured. Well, I think that might have um, obviously given me less cause for pause. I mean, it certainly isn't in here, uh, but I would be interested in knowing if they're going to insure the city of Trenton for this event. Um, I can probably guarantee that, and I will let you know, um, Noel is new president, so he probably just didn't know to put it inside of the, um, the paperwork when it came down to it because he's just been a president for the last month and a half. Will you get back with us on that? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Councilman Lefevre. Yeah, being a part of the Rotary Club, uh, there's different people used to, every year we always allow the, uh, the uh, prayer day here for bad weather to come inside and use the uh, facility, okay? So it's not very unusual to do that. And all the money raised from this will go towards a anti-bullying uh, education for the uh, mainly the school kids in the city of Trenton and the, and the public schools that teach kids why uh, you know, bullying somebody is not a good idea and uh, I wholeheartedly support that effort. And uh, while I do understand Marilyn's uh, concerns, I think that the Rotary Club will spend the money wisely and try and make the city of Trenton a better place for everybody. And that's why we'll be voting yes. Councilwoman McLeod. You know, that's never an issue for me. I know that Rotary does very good things for the city. So that's never an issue. And I mean, the, there are many clubs that do very nice things for the city of Trenton and for students. And um, I just think this is a bad precedent. We should not be allowing people to use City Hall as a hall. I mean, if it's all about school kids and bullying, why not use the school? I mean, that, it just, it's just a bad precedent. And I don't think the liability warrants allowing groups to use the City Hall after hours. Anyone else? Uh, Councilwoman McLeod, are you refer wanting a roll call vote? Please. Okay. Madam Clerk, Is roll call. Person Taylor aware of what we voted? I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lefevre? Yes. McLeod? No. Stack? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Typer? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Howie? Yes. Motion carried, Mayor Stack. Okay, thank you very much. Our next item uh, is C2, the Kiwanis Club annual peanut sale, and it has been approved by the Civic Commission. It's for October 8th through the 13th, and uh, I ask the pleasure of the council. I would so move. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any, any discussion? Just a question. Has sure. the Civic Commission had a chance to look at this and approve? Yes, they have approved that. Thank you. Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Okay, next is the Trenton High School girls golf team, which I see sitting in front of me, I think, with their coach. And uh, they're asking for, uh, let's see, September 15th from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, to collect bottles in the community. And uh, I, what's the desire of the council? I would move that we agree with this. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. Mayor Stack. Sure. Um, could we have the coach come down and tell us exactly what is proposed in terms of, you know, if there are notices that are going to go out, when they want things to come out? Can you come up to the podium here, please? Well, I actually had one of the students oh, was okay. prepared to speak. Is that Great. okay? Great. Better yet. Is this Laura? Yes. <coughs> okay. Very good. Good evening. My name is Laura Beck, so I'm a senior at Trenton High School. I am the captain of the Trenton High School girls varsity golf team. We are here tonight to ask the council for permission to host a bottle drive in the Trenton community on Saturday, September 15th. Can donations received will help offset costs that the Trenton High School athletic budget can no longer support. Includes course practice fees, tournament entry fees, and possible, possible equipment upgrade like golf bags and rain gear. We appreciate the council's consideration and thank you in advance from the Trenton girls golf team. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilman Lefevre. Just oh. any questions Just, you have, I have no problem a answering. Uh, okay. As far as, go ahead. I, I guess I would, uh, that sounds like to me to be the shortest 
bottle drive in the history of Trenton. Yeah, okay. It's a one hour bottle drive. Um, we weren't sure as far as what to ask for with permission as far as a time frame. I do know that Victory Day is that afternoon, so we didn't want to conflict. Uh, the plan was once things were approved, we were going to go ahead and pass out flyers or whatever was the discretion of the council a week prior, um, explaining when we'd be back to pick him up. The bottle drive itself, that was just the pickup time on the 15th. So, Can I give you a suggestion because yes. I've done bottle drives? Mm -hmm. I would do it on the brightest piece of paper you can have sure. to uh, drop off at the people's store and, then and also make sure that they tape it to the bag because you'll get everything from dirty diapers to garbage, mm -hmm. when, you know, going to the door. That's what so, we're going to do. Okay. Okay. So what day were you going to drop off the um, flyers? Well, we wanted to wait for permission, but we were planning on doing that this weekend. Okay. And that would September give a week. 8th. Yes. Saturday. Yes. And Not then your pickup will be on September 15th. Are you doing the full town or are you going to pick up? Are you going just in one area? Do you have a certain area you want to go? or? Um, once again, we're waiting on permission, but we're basically going nearby the ladies' houses, obviously um, nearby the school. We weren't sure exactly the routes, but... Okay. Um, if you need any somebody. maps, you can see the clerk. She's got maps if you okay. need maps of the city. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. Councilwoman McLeod. I don't think an hour is enough. Okay. I mean, even if you're only going to cover a block with each young woman here, so maybe we should expand the time. Okay. Well, yeah, 8 to noon. Okay, excellent. Thank you. We weren't sure what to ask for, so I appreciate that. So Either 8 to noon or 8 to 1, I would suggest it. So okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do you, we need to amend our motion? Yeah, just to, uh, yes, it, I would um, actually say that the, it would be September 15th from 8 to, do you want to go with 1 or do you want to go with noon? It's up to you. Either. 1 would be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is, it, is that in full agreement with um, the makers of the motion? Who was the makers of the motion? Bon Crooks, I thought. It was McLeod and Taylor. Oh, it was? Mm -hmm. Then yes, it's fine with me. Okay. Okay for you? Yes. Do you have a question, too? I did. Go ahead, Councilman Taylor. Um, it, along with bottles, if any individual wanted to send a check to the team to, to assist them in equipment, um, do, where could we send a check to? The, the, the school board building? or? Um, that's a great question. Uh, to my knowledge, I think you could just send it to the Trenton Athletic Department, maybe attention girls golf team I'm sure uh, my athletic director Brett Woodley would you know welcome that and we would that would be greatly appreciated so and made out made, the made out to Trenton out. Public Schools okay, okay. I, you know it's it's because it was in, my daughter played four years of varsity golf at Trenton okay and um, years quite a year, number of years ago <laughs> but uh, it was a new program back then and all the other teams they, they go to regional tournaments would have rain gear and everything else under the sun and these poor girls would just get drenched um, so I, I think it's important to support uh, girls' athletics, especially uh, golf and other sports in Trump. Okay. Very good. That's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Councilman Hearing Peter. that, okay, and being you started at 8 o'clock in the morning, I would appreciate if you all went over to Councilman Taylor's house at 8 o'clock in the morning and got that check. <laughs> There'll be a check. <laughs> there will be a check on the front door taped. <laughs> Don't come by my house until after 10, okay? I'm a late riser. <laughs> Okay. Good luck to you. You got that. Okay. Thank you. So is there any other discussion? Seeing that it's unanimously so ordered, and the clerk will get a letter for you so that it, you'll have it on you just in case somebody were to ask. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck, ladies. Good Do luck. Us proud. Have you, have you had any games yet or any matches? Have you won? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. I like that. Very good. Well, good luck for the rest of your season then. You do not have to stay for the rest of this meeting, believe me. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. C4 is the Trenton High School uh, girls swim team bottle drive, and uh, they are requesting for October 13th from 10 to 1 p.m. And I'm not seeing if they're dropping off flyers here. Is there anybody from the swim team here? No. Okay. Mayor Stack, I would move that we concur with the request. Support. It's been moved and uh, supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. <laughs> okay, under department heads and officials, uh, uh, D1 is from myself. Um, basically, it is a letter uh, letting you know what happened with the talk that I had with Bob Riney from Henry Ford Health System. And uh, I don't know if I would move that we receive it and place it on file. 
to pour it. Maybe that's not even the right thing to do since it's coming from us. But um, it's been moved and supported. Go ahead. You know, we've had so much discourse about this issue that just because the letter's on file, um, I, I really would like it if you would tell the people here and at home, um, give them an update to the extent that you can um, based on what you were told and so that they have an idea of what's going on. Well, uh, basically, I had a conversation on August 23rd with uh, Bob Riney, who is the COO, the Chief Operating Officer for Henry Ford Health Systems, and it was regarding the Riverside Hospital property. The conversation, um, he expressed concerns about the council, you know, um, that he expressed both privately and publicly regarding the issue. And, um, you know, basically, uh, we had a nice conversation. They're willing to um, help us with uh, moving forward. If Dr. Nasir uh, does not move forward, that they would help to uh, possibly provide some help in the area because they do have connections for uh, grants um, that you know the, I'm trying to think of uh, exactly what how we said it um, he, he, they were w wanting to help the okay locate the funding and resources to facilitate the demolition and clean up of the property um, they agreed to talk to us in approximately two weeks, and uh, at that time we'll find out Dr. Nasir has been issued a letter of what he cannot have at the facility. Um, we did receive a memo um, in the um, a memo today that just came between the time that I left from work here to the time that we got here in regards to the uh, the deed restrictions and what um, Dr. Nasir cannot have at the facility. And uh, at this point in time, I have not heard from Dr. Nasir to know where he's going to be going with this, but we know that it's been referred to his legal counsel. Councilwoman McLeod. So in essence, Henry Ford is saying, according to your letter, that, um, that it has taken some of the deed restrictions off to allow Dr. Nasir to proceed um, for the uses that he had discussed in his meeting with Henry Ford. Is that basically your understanding? I'm, I'm not fully aware. I don't believe that they've taken anything off. I think um, they have basically have always stuck to what they've had on the list. I don't think that they've um, actually taken anything off of the list that I'm aware of. Um, if it is, it's unless um, my city administrator, Jim Wagner, can tell you if something has been taken off, but I'm not aware of it being taken off. If you, you have something you want to say, Jim? Actually, Madam Mayor, this uh, communication dated today from David Lee, their senior counsel, indicates what they will not allow him to do. And however, the big thing is in the second from the last paragraph, the long-term acute care hospital that he was concerned about and wanted to construct there is something that they said they would allow. I would make a motion that we receive and place this September 4, 2012 communication from Henry Ford, Sy System Vice President and General Counsel. Support. Okay. Well, we had a motion on the floor for the other document, too. Do you just want to include that? or? Yes. Okay. Who was, uh, Timber was the, Timber was the support. support. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Councilman Lefevre, discussion. Well, as Mary Ellen may believe it, it takes some deed restrictions away. It really does not. Okay. Uh, so I hope it works out. Hope it really does. But anytime you have a list of uh, how many other Mary Ellen? Ten? There's seven. 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 Anytime you have a seven deed restriction, it makes it awful tough. And there, some of them are pretty general to go out and borrow money to do a project. So I hope it's enough to have Dr. Nasur uh, go ahead with the Move project. Forward. That's what I'm hoping for, okay? But at least it sounds like my interpretation is that they're willing, if it doesn't work, they, they understand that they are one of the problems with that building and they're willing to assist us somehow to get the building torn down. Is what I believe it says. Is that the interpretation, Marilyn, or not? Well, my interpretation is that Henry Ford is saying it doesn't own the property anymore. We all know that. And it's saying to the extent possible it will do what it can to help us, um, but it doesn't sound like it's assuming any obligation financially. No. Right. Correct. Is there any other discussion? Councilwoman McLeod. Yes. Um, this letter from David Lee, the Vice President and General Counsel, indicates that he, they had a meeting, Dr. Nasir, Jim Sexton, and this Bob Rinney. 
or Rhiney. And that Dr. Nasir expressed his desire to construct and operate a long-term acute care hospital at the site. Henry Ford says it is completely comfortable with removing the deed restriction that will allow him to construct and operate a long-term acute care facility at this site, provided that it would not be expanded or transitioned to a full-service acute care hospital in the future. So I guess the way I interpret this and the way I interpret your communication dated August 30 is that the ball is now in Dr. Nasir's court and I would request that this administration ask Dr. Nasir back down here and uh, to get him to state his intention vis-a-vis -vis moving forward with this project. I mean, he came to us a few months ago and he plaintively, he pled with us to help him and we did. And um, certainly there's been a lot of discourse since then. So let's find out what Dr. Nasir wants. Is he gonna move forward or not? Good. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Are, are you gonna request that he come here? Yeah. I mean, yes. Okay. I will. Yes. Thank you. If um, if he chooses not to, um, I would like something in writing as to where he's going with it. So. Okay. Um, D2 is uh, a memo for me. It's in <coughs> regards to the non-union benefits and um, it's um, consistent with benefit modifications recently negotiated with the union employees. I'm asking for the council to consider the modifications to the non-union, um, you know, for the non-union employees. Make a motion to agree with the uh, uh, non-union benefits uh, issue proposed by the uh, mayor at the last study session, which we have in front of us here. On, uh, make that motion. No. Support. I will let you know that there has been a revised, so. The revised, the revised edition. Revised. Mm -hmm. My motion would be this motion that we discussed last week upstairs, okay, to make it fair to everybody, okay. 22 years I've been here, okay, we've always made it fair to people, all right? And uh, whether it be union or non-union, you have to treat everybody, I believe, just me personally, as fair. I didn't hear one person out here say that when we did the cuts, they should take more of a cut or whatever. We did the cuts the same as we did for the ASME people. And that's what I thought we discussed upstairs. Maybe I missed it, okay. Evidently, I did miss it again, okay. But uh, I, I thought Bob Howie asked me for your recommendation, okay. You said that. I gave my talk. Councilman Typer said, hey, whatever you have five votes for, I'll be the fifth vote for it. That's the way I remember it. If that didn't happen, Somebody needs to tell me about that. Okay. Okay. that my motion is for this uh, for D2. It's the same, they would be paid, get their money back the same as the Ask Me people did in their contract. Like we have done for the last 22 years I've been here. We've always done that, treat everybody fair. That's my motion. If there's no second, that's fine. That's my motion. Okay, there's been a motion um, in regards to the. So I, I second it for okay. sake of discussion. Okay, who had their hand up first? So does anybody know? It's. It was my recollection okay, at ahead. the study session that, that it was going to be a tiered. A that, that's th like, like the revised that we have in front of us this afternoon. Okay, it's a tiered area. Okay. Councilwoman McLeod. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Bon Crooks. Tim bon Crooks. Yeah, I'm your friend, Timber. <laughs> I've been saying McLeod. I've been saying McLeod all night. Just, just a thought because you're always calling on her. That's why. Councilwoman <laughs> <laughs> Bon Crooks. Oh, I was under the impression, too, like Councilman Howie, that it would we were going with this revised plan on the um, tiered system. I never heard one, I guess I missed it, but I am I would support the revised system that I thought we were all in agreement with upstairs. Okay, so. Councilman Typer. Yeah, I agree, uh, the tiered piece was the uh, discussion we had upstairs. Okay. Other than that, I think it's all, this, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, the only difference revision is number two, the, re, the tiered approach. That's correct. Right. Councilman LaFever. I guess I'm flabbergasted. None of you heard Bob Howie ask the mayor for her recommendation upstairs. Nobody heard that but me. That's correct. Bob, you didn't ask the mayor at the last council session what her recommendation was? We did. And then we that did, and she grabbed a piece of paper and said, I've got it right here and writing. This is my recommendation. And that recommendation that we received on that evening is, was it a tiered? Mm -hmm. that, that was an option. Right. Uh, I that, that's fine. Whatever. I, I don't recall it that way. That's fine. So we have a motion. Yeah, the motion was for the, the $800. All 
I would make a substitute motion that we approve the revised details. Support. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported with the substitute motion to have the tiered system. Councilwoman McLeod. Um, unfortunately, I still cannot vote yes for this. And I just very briefly want to say that it's because I don't think we are in a position to, quote, catch up. That's, that's what was being advocated, that, you know, we're going to catch up this group with every other group. But unfortunately, I don't think anything has changed. I don't think the city of Trenton has won the lotto. I don't think that our property values are up again. I don't think that there is any funding source that's coming to us that we were not aware of at the time of budget. And quite honestly, um, the idea that we are going to catch up. I mean, we, we asked for 5% reductions in pay because the city's situation was dire. And, and I don't think there's anything that's changed about this. And so the idea that we are going to offer a goodwill loyalty reward um, for people to come to work is, is nothing I can support. I don't think our budget can support this. And unfortunately, I mean, if we had a lot of money, I would give every one of you um, a loyalty reward. But that's, that's not the case, and that's my opinion. So I'll be asking for um, a roll call vote, please. Councilman Lefevre. Unfortunately, Mary Ellen, I'm in, I have to be on your side voting no, but for a different reason, okay? I respect that. And you put a no on the ask me contract, is that correct? I vote a no on so all I the can, contracts. I can, I, can, I can respect you for that, okay? You've been consistent with that, okay? Uh, however, once again, I have to be consistent, and uh, over the whole time I've been here, I just always ask uh, with my employees at work or employees here to treat them fairly. I don't think that is a fair way to treat our people who are going. Some of these people here took promotions out of the uh, ranks and file to take their job they have today, and there's a lot of people making a lot more money than they are in their own department. And to go ahead and pick a handful of people out here who are supposedly going to lead us through this problem we have, the people that I believe in, and say they're not going to get it doesn't set well with me. So on the contrary, I will be voting no also because I don't think it's fair enough. So I'll ask for a roll call along with Mary Ellen. Councilman Howie. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I will be voting yes for this, but I, I just wanted to, to, to make a couple comments. Uh, uh, one, I agree with, with Mary Ellen. Um, I don't believe we're out of the woods yet either. I think we still have some tough times. Hopefully our, 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 our revenue sources continues to, to, to grow and uh, we control expenses. However, I, I don't feel that this body should be picking winners and losers. I think if, if, if as far as the union members, um, the three union contracts, um, I think all you know, I voted no for that, um, mostly because of opening up a defined uh, benefit plan, but it was other giveaways like this that I had concern with. But I believe this is a fairness issue, and I believe if, if we give it to the, the union people, then I think we need to come forward with the, uh, the non-union, so I will be voting yes on this. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Just to clarify, we are voting on the revised D2. That's the for substitute right. motion. Yes. For the substitute motion. Okay, McLeod? No. Stack? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Typher? Yes. Von Crooks? Yes. Howie? Yes. Lefevre? No. Motion carried, Mayor Stack. Thank you very much. Okay, D3 is from our city administrator. It's in regards to the sign ordinance. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, pursuant to a request of Councilman Howie and, and some comments from some other council people, I requested the city planner outline the method to redo the sign ordinance and the method is on the back side. It's referring it to the planning commission and for changing it, seeing if they'll be studying it. I'd make that motion that we refer it to the Planning Commission Is for a recommendation. It's been or moved and supported. Discussion? Councilman McLeod. Just a question. Do you have any idea what that's going to cost us to have Becker and Rader involved? Uh, that's part of their monthly uh, stipend. And uh, actually, they have provided some material uh, already I actually think it's more of the going to the Planning Commission for them to hold a hearing okay and then once it's passed it costs you money to have the ordinance put into the ordinance book that's you know there will be a fee for that Councilman Lefevre 
the last time we tried it, it turned on to be an unbelievable deal down here. It cost the city a lot of money. They tried to do things that were over restrictive in my view, okay? I believe that Mr. Howie has sent a letter. I believe you sent a letter uh, months ago. You never heard anything back from it. Is that fair to say, or am I misquoting you? No, nope, that's fair to say. And, and perhaps I can forward the letter around to the, our city clerk, and she can read it out loud and put it in the, the record. I guess if we're going to go out and spend a, a bunch of money and there isn't a whole lot of support up here, it doesn't make sense to me. Madam Clerk, yeah. and Madam Mayor, before we read that, I'd like to, I think, do we require a motion to read that into the minutes, Wally, or not? Do we have a motion to read it in the minutes? Yes, to enter it into the minutes. So moved. Motion. Support. Okay. And moved and supported. Okay. Madam Clerk. All right, this letter is dated August 8th. 2011 and it's addressed to the Planning Commission regarding the Central Business District Sign Ordinance. Dear Planning Commission, the Planning Commission's recommended changes to the sign ordinance within the Central Business District were discussed at the Downtown Development Authority's meeting on May 4, 2011. Please be advised that the DDA does not support the current sign ordinance, nor does it support the Planning Commission's recommended changes approved at your meeting of February 23, 2011. It is the opinion of the DDA that both the current ordinance and the proposed changes are unduly restrictive and would hinder business recruitment and development. The DDA remains supportive of, of the recommended modifications as discussed by the Joint Subcommittee of the Planning Commission and DDA, so C attached draft, and would welcome the opportunity to meet and discuss potential changes to the existing sign ordinance. Please contact me if you would like to schedule a joint meeting to further discuss this matter. Thank you in advance for your consideration and please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Sincerely, Trenton Downtown Development Authority, Robert Howey, Chairman. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Is this something uh, we want to put on a study session in the future or? No. Okay, so we're going to refer it to the Planning Commission and the letter has been received to put in or on file with the clerk. Councilman Tyfer? Well, just a question. We've been through this so many times. I guess the question would be if there's a recommendation from the DDA slash Planning, planning Commission, why don't we get that through, get it presented and see if we can uh, accept it as it is and then you know, whatever it takes for the, if the planning commission first has to pass it and pass it on to us without us redoing all it. I, I'm not in the mood to go through this again. Or I think if it, they want to make it more less restrictive and they've got both the DDA and the planning commission are in agreement, mm -hmm. we got to get it to our agenda as fast as we can and get it passed and not study this to death and spend a lot of money doing it. Agreed. Madam Mayor, if if, if I may. Who was first? Go ahead, Bob. I'll um, go after you. Councilman Howie. It, it has gone to Planning Commission, and Planning Commission is received in place on file, so they, they don't plan on acting on it. They believe it's, it's, it's adequate the way it is. So we can send it back <coughs> as, as a request from Mayor and Council, and then perhaps they'll look at it differently. Not quite sure, but um, I agree it's probably going to come back with the same response. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm not jumping in. No, go ahead. You want to no, I, I just, the question is, what option do we have if the Planning Commission doesn't want to act? We, had, we can't just overrule a Planning Commission. Well, is there something that we can do in regards to, we can't the planning overrule commission the Planning Commission? If, if we take a look at uh, uh, Mr. Tolarico's documents on the back page, it says that there would be a recommendation by Planning Commission, but doesn't it eventually comes back to Council for approval. So that their Planning Commission is a recommended body. The question is, what if they recommend nothing? Then we can either accept that response or we can make a move forward on, move forward on, on a different, different direction. Why don't I um, why don't I go ahead and have Mr. Uh, Wagner talk with Ben Tellerico in regards to the Planning Commission, and see um, you know what their 
what their ideas are and we can go from there and uh, maybe move forward with it or or just as it might stay the same councilwoman McLeod oh, I'm sorry Von Kriegs. well I from what councilman Howie is saying you think that the sign ordinance for the downtown development area is too restrictive absolutely it's oh. anti-business I mean uh, let's let's yeah. just go over a couple of the items I, I don't haven't gone through it in, in months and months but just just for the folks at home I mean that the, the think that we have something a restriction in there that you cannot be interior illuminated I mean just common sense would say that that's just not practical an interior illuminated sign 99.9% .9 of the signs out there across America are illuminated interiorly sure 12 square feet per side I mean that's that is very very minimal 48 inches high I mean th those are just items that in request are just are not business friendly and in, in my my I guess comment to to council person Typher is hey I don't want to keep debate this thing anymore either let's either move forward um, the reality is this body you folks except Kyle and myself approved it whether you knew it or you didn't know it it went through supposedly the DDA didn't approve it came to you you approved it next thing you know it's an ordinance so I think we need to be responsible and, and if this body does not believe that it's overly restrictive that's fine everybody's entitled to their vote I personally believe that it's overly restrictive it's going to discourage business I'm all for encouraging businesses in our downtown as well as West Road not discourage them Go ahead, yeah I think if a business wants to come to Trenton right now I think we ought to put up the red flags and welcome them and put uh, beams in the ceiling because you know nobody's knocking down our doors to put businesses down there and I think somehow we could come up with a variance of some sort and you know send it through the planning commission send it through the zoning board if we have to but come up with if, the, if somebody wants to open a business in Trenton we should be the least restrictive for, for any reason and try to you know work with people and give them a variance they may need to put up a illuminated sign if they need it See, I mean we got to do whatever we can yeah I, yeah I, I, I don't think a variance is the way to go because then that puts that, that puts the, the, the decision into the Planning Commission's hand I just think they shouldn't have to jump through oh. ropes we shouldn't have to go jump through those hoops they shouldn't right. have to pay for those fees they shouldn't have to wait six or eight weeks and go through the public hearings I, I, I agree mean, to me it's we need to make a decision I agree we got to worry about getting business here first before we worry about a sign um, period councilman Lefevre no I think I'm going to say I'll raise my hand okay councilman Le councilman McLeod um, I think it should go to the Planning Commission which is the recommendation and if it fails to act then we should consider having a study session and asking the Planning Commission and the Downtown Development Authority to come in jointly so I'm that saying. we can kick the issue around and try to find some common ground and, and you know I agree too if it's restrictive we ought to be looking at it because obviously we need to encourage businesses not discourage them from coming here if anything uh, would it would anybody be interested in having the DDA and have that joint meeting before we start going because what they've already when it, well we did this I mean we heard everybody He's right. We heard it. We kind of beat it to death. Why not let the Planning Commission come back now? I mean, they've heard us say, at least some of us say, that we don't want restrictions that are unreasonable. I mean, I don't want signs that are pornographic. I think they should bring something back that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, then we can act on it. And if there is no recommendation that comes back, then we'll take the next step. Councilman Taylor. I'm not going to say anything at this point. Okay. Uh, is there any more discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. D4 is from our city engineer, Bill Hogan. Um, it's in regards to petition to combine property. Thank you. Before you is a petition um, by Mr. Malinowski. He owns the property, uh, lot four and five on Sibley Road, and he's requesting a uh, combination of those two 40 foot lots. So I'd like uh, to refer to this. Uh, petition to the Planning Commission for their review and recommendation. So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, D5 is the City Attorney and Zoning Ordinance 7053, Amendment to the Zoning uh, Code to Address Pet Grooming and Kenneling. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, proposed Ordinance 7053 <clears throat> is a uh, recommendation uh, from the Planning Commission to amend the uh, zoning code uh, in really two uh, manners and fashion. One is to uh, uh, redefine uh, in the uh, prior or existing ordinance the uh, reference to a pet uh, as domestic uh, animals, including a wider range of, uh, of animals and to uh, permit uh, grooming activities in uh, certain of the uh, zoning districts within the city. It's available for council's consideration on first reading this evening. I would move that we reject this ordinance. There's support to the rejection of the ordinance? I'll support for uh, discussion. discussion. Okay, discussion? Because you're intrigued, right? I am. Okay. Um, okay, what I don't like about this is the definition of a domesticated animal. Now, maybe it's not meant to be comprehensive, but it says, and I quote, pet, a domesticated animal such as a dog, cat, bird, rodent, parentheses, including a rabbit, end parentheses, fish or turtle that is traditionally kept in the home for pleasure rather than for commercial purposes. Common household pet does not include reptiles, parentheses, except turtles, end parentheses, dangerous or exotic animal or livestock. This definition shall not include animals that are used to assist persons with disabilities. So here's my first issue. What about people with ferrets, snakes, lizards? How about Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs? And what happens to the citizens of the city of Trenton who already have these animals? Do they have to get rid of them? Do they have to destroy them? I mean, this ordinance doesn't speak to that. I mean, we're, I mean, people define pets differently. And yes, I agree, we should not have wild tigers in our homes. We should not have those kinds of animals. I think that should be prohibited by law, but I don't have a problem with a ferret. A lot of people have snakes. Do I like snakes? Absolutely not. Um, but I think this is too restrictive a definition. The other problem that I have is this, what veterinary medicine offices can and can't do. It says no pet grooming. So does that mean if I take my dog in to have its dupa shaved, it can't shave my dog because that's gro grooming? Is this also meant to preclude any kennels within the city in certain areas? I mean, is that the point of this? I don't know, but if a kennel wanted to come in and establish a business somewhere in Trenton that wasn't as in a residential area, would we be precluded from allowing that to happen? I mean, a lot of things in here make a lot of sense. I, I, I like all the animal protections that are in here. I think all the ideas about appropriate space and um, cleaning and, and being mindful of your neighbors and all of that, I think that's all great stuff. But my problem is that I think this isn't, it doesn't go far enough to define um, exemptions and it doesn't speak to the issues that I just raised and that's why I can't support it. Okay. Councilman Taylor. What triggered this coming to council? Yeah. Madam Mayor, maybe we ask uh, yeah, yeah, city, engineer. city engineer. I, I engineer. can help him out while he's coming down. Uh, what triggered it, there's a existing building uh, located in downtown Trenton that somebody purchased in, in the, the purchase that they were looking, the business they were looking to do was, was to have a uh, grooming for dogs and cats. It's going to be a self-serve grooming facility. So people would come in that didn't want to have uh, bring their dogs and then bathe them in their bathtub or in there. Yeah. They would provide a tub space, a drying space, and whatnot. And you come in there and pay a fee, and they would ha they would provide towels and, and whatnot. So the whole purpose of that was not to redefine domestic animals. But the whole purpose of this was for th that particular grooming to be included as an acceptable uh, use in that uh, particular business district. But I'll let our fine engineer <laughs> explain it. That's my understanding that uh, essentially there was a couple cleanups required with the existing ordinance. One was the definition of a pet and the allowance of grooming. As it stood, and Mr. Long can correct me, um, a veterinarian under the present ordinance could not allow for grooming, which we know that could be a part of their their uh, medical care. So that sure. was that was a cleanup component to include that in this. But it's precluded. Uh, not if you continue to read on. 
uh, for, for this zoning, for this particular zoning location. The other part of it was that, um, as Mr. Howie mentioned, this particular facility was not defined in our, our present ordinance, uh, grooming, self-serve grooming, whether they do it uh, in this particular location. So uh, not necessarily to accommodate this specific business, but to have it included in this entire area. Is there any other questions? Any more discussion? Seeing none, it's well, yours. Hang on a second. Uh, on I'm, I'm going to rescind my uh, my second of the motion of Councilperson McLeod okay. and offer another motion if I could. Okay. And that would be um, to refer this to a um, study session. I, I think there's, there's a need to to assist businesses in coming into town. I think, a, and I think the, the whole nature of grooming has changed. For instance, we have to take our pets to get groomed to Gibraltar we, because I don't believe they can be groomed in, in vet offices in Trenton. In fact, I could be wrong, but I think it's the case. So, so my wife explains to me anyway. Um, so uh, I, I, I do think we need to re-look re at this to exp let our uh, current businesses get into, into that uh, business and also to allow new businesses and the self-serve thing. I, you see it up and down in Monroe County. I mean, it's becoming a new fad where people bring their animals in. Um, you know, if you have an apartment, you don't really have a place to wash your animal very well, so you bring the animals in there and you, and you go through the process. Uh, but I, th I think we need to flush it out. And what, like Mary Ellen, what really concerns me is the definition of, of a d domestic animal. And we went through that a few years ago when we had the, the, the dangerous okay. a animal uh, ordinance and alligator. it was all over the place and it didn't make any sense and yeah. I, I want to stay away from that. I've got you you making the motion but I don't have a second. Sorry, I support. excuse me. Okay. So it's been moved and supported. Do you have anything else here you want to say? I've talked way too much. Okay. Is there anybody else that has discussion that they would like to talk about with this? So it's to refer to a council study session? Okay. Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any late communications? No, we are staff. Okay, thank you. I'd like to um, defer uh, to Councilman Typher in regards to the disbursements and statements and reports. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would move that we approve the disbursements of $362,885.53. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. I would further move that we receive and place on file the uh, uh, Brownstown Auto Aid report uh, dated July of 12. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported in regards to the Brownstown Auto Aid report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, it's unanimously so ordered. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, other council business, I'm going to go to the council mem members. Um, I believe that it's, I want to say it's 10 this time, starting off with 10. Um, I have a, no, I'm, I'm going to pass over to, to uh, City Administrator Wagner in a second, but just so everybody knows, this last year, the uh, Trempo Schools received a 2012 Education Excellence Award, uh, a national award, and they have a sign uh, that proclaims that. And we should probably put that up at one of our welcoming locations, so like we have signs for other other organizations or other other athletic stars or actresses or whatever in town. We have done it in the past. Uh, they have one sign that's been done. I would suggest that we look into expanding this particular sign and putting it at three or four of the locations so we sell ourselves better uh, with the uh, with the our, our neighboring communities with education I mean ed education is what built this city and uh, you know l last few years we have not lived up to our our uh, levels of expectations but we're starting to do that again so if that's right with the administrator I'd like to move pass this on to uh, Jim and see, what, see where it takes us sure can look at that and see if um, 
we could find room alongside of our welcoming sign yeah. and the, how big it is, so. the award was given a few months ago. We, we were all invited to attend. To attend it, I didn't attend it, quite frankly. But not a problem. Do you have anything else? I'm already done. Councilman Taylor, you have anything else? No, ma'am. Okay, Councilmember Beaver. Just a little. Uh, those signs that are put up about uh, Marilyn Reiskup and uh, JJ Putts were paid for with private funds. Okay. Huh? Unfortunately, some of them were put on county post. Okay. <laughs> And the rumor is, a pretty good rumor, the county came by and took down most of them, okay? Right. Which I'm appalled by, okay? So I would make sure that we put something out there, okay? That our friends of the county have so much time in their hands, they can come by and take our signs or pay it for by private citizens down, okay? I would encourage him, maybe it's quite doing that, that we prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Uh. I don't disagree with that at all, Bill. I mean, I think that should anybody steal one of our signs, they should be prosecuted. Just like the county at, at went one few years back was uh, taking signs down and we tossed some of their folks in jail here back in the 70s. So it's not, a, it's not the first time we've had this, this battle with the county. I'm referring it to Jim so that it gets done properly. So he checks with the county, makes sure it's done on county easements, that it's allowable, and that they have one sign currently if we can raise monies to put up more because I think it's really important to the city that we t let our citizens know how valuable education is and that we're moving in the right direction. You know, for years we were the best school district in, in Wayne County and one of the top ten in the state of Michigan. I don't think it's any, any longer the case, unfortunately, but it, the tr it appears we're trending back towards that way and we all let people know. about education. I was talking to Marilyn. I apologize, okay? Her and I rarely talk. It's, a, it's, an, it's an award that the city got an award that was, uh, sorry, the school district got an award uh, and the awarding uh, jurisdiction presented them with a sign to put up. Are you, you're telling me you're going to go down to the school board and tell them to take their award and pay for it and post it? I mean, if the city, who got the award? The, the, the school board got the, the school district? The school got? district did, Bill. Yeah. And okay. I think if Jim can work all that out with them. That's what all I'm doing is making sure that it follows the right channels. Well, not on Monday night, I won't. If I have to, I will, though. Talk to the superintendent. I mean, so that's not this a is silly. We'll talk to the superintendent. Councilman McPeever, it's your turn. Are you going this way? Yep. Okay, thanks. Just a couple of things uh, that, I, that are important to me and me, probably. Uh, well, a few other people. One is on uh, September 15th. My good friend, Marilyn McLeod, reminded me that that's Victory Day at the Trenton High School football field. And every year, the uh, Trenton High football players, the cheerleaders, the band, the touchdown club, and a lot of other people get together, and they bring in 50, uh, what do I want to call those kids, Marilyn? I'll get myself in trouble. Developmentally disabled. Development disabled special, kids special, special and those, needs. And those yeah. kids are allowed to score a touchdown or cheer with the cheerleaders or play with the band. It's an hour and a half event. It's phenomenal. If you haven't been there, it's definitely worthwhile coming out for. Uh, it's from 10:30 till 12 at Trenton Football Field, and uh, nobody will feel better about being there than yourself. It's uh, it's totally unbelievable, and, and they do a great job with it. So if you can make it there, be there at 10:30. Just an hour and a half. They have a little hot dog lunch afterwards. Lloyd Carr will be there. They've got some news media coming. Uh, a couple of special players coming down who has no ar uh, no arms. A very capable kid coming down to get a little talk. It's very very rewarding. Don't miss that. The next day is one of my favorite events on September 16th. Is the Taste of Trenton, which you go out there and get a whole lot of food. And that starts, I believe, at 11 o'clock until like five. It's at Elizabeth Park. Uh, all the local restaurants are there. You get a little sample for it. It's the, uh, there's a lot of neat things that happen in Elizabeth Park. It's a lot of fun. So we'll be out there on September 16th, and then uh, we'll have a whole lot of fun. Perfect. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman McLeod. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilman Howie. I just want to do a, a quick shout out to, um, to inform all the residents that the Trenton Hockey Association will be out in force for their annual decal sale. That'll be Saturday. So you'll be seeing a, a lot of uh, kids running around, pounding on your door with uh, um, Trenton Hockey jerseys on, looking to sell decals. And, and just a clarification for that sign that we talked about, and if it does in fact 
they put it, install it in downtown, the maximum elevation is four feet. <laughs> One dollar for the decals. Councilman Diver. The, uh, the only thing I want to share is the next council meeting, which would be the 17th, if that be, I'm not going to be uh, available. I've got a commitment that I've got to keep. Councilman Bonkrux. Yeah, just a, maybe a briefing, maybe you could explain to us, Jim, how's things, how are things going with it, uh, Kennedy Ice Arena? Um, I've had some inquiries from different Actually, um, I had a conversation with them this morning, Mr. Bayoff, and uh, I indicated that um, time is running on this particular thing and asked him what his time frame was, and he informed me that his new partners were coming on board uh, today and tomorrow. As a matter of fact, they're having a meeting tomorrow, and I indicated to him that it was would be nice if Mr. Long and his attorney and the four of us could get together uh, this week or early next week so we could button this up and get this deal resolved, the default resolved. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a couple. Council Member Beaver. Okay. Um, I have a couple things. Um, I just wanted the council to, I, I'll pass this around. Uh, this is from the uh, Trenton Trojan football 2012 season. We put an ad in, and I just wanted to show you what the ad looked like, so I'll pass that around for everybody to see. No Trojans. <laughs> there you go. Um, I wanted to also mention, um, first of all, I'd like to um, welcome uh, our mayor, our past mayor, um, Tom Baritsky. I think he's out here somewhere, just to welcome him to our meeting today. But um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you is um, I got an email from uh, Meg Larson that is uh, a resident of Trenton. And she informed me, just so you're talking about the education end of uh, Trenton Public Schools, um, Chuck Baker is a uh, young man that graduated in 1982. And he, is, um, he was responsible for the building of the rocket technology for the six rockets that were needed to hover the ship above Mars so cables could drop it down to the ground. So um, just wanted to give him a shout out that he's uh, done a great thing there and that we're proud of him that he's from Trenton. So um, I got that from an email through one of our residents. Also, uh, I have, um, I'm looking for, and I'll, I'll check with uh, some of the council members, but um, they're having an event at the theater coming up on September 22nd. I cannot attend. Um, but I'm looking for somebody that would like to um, welcome the audience to the city of Trenton, and it'll be at the Trenton Theater. It's the, um, the premiere performance of a new play celebrating the legendary romance of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. As a resident of Trenton, it pleases me to tell you that this dramatic recital will be held at the Trenton uh, Theater on Saturday, September 22nd at 7 o'clock. She asked if I could come. I have a family commitment on that day, so I'm not going to be able to attend. But um, if one of the council members would be willing to go, I she would love to have somebody there to uh, uh, welcome the audience to Trenton. Also, uh, after the meeting, if anybody's interested, um, I'm going to place an order for the tickets for the annual steak roast, which is the chamber. Um, this is on September 13th from 4.30 to 9, and uh, the dinner is served from 5 to 8. So. Um, any of you that are interested, let me know, and I'll make sure that we get tickets for um, our council here. Other than that, um, I'm going to go to the elected officials. Madam Clerk, do you have anything this evening? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Just another reminder that Tuesday, October 9th, is the last day to register to vote in order to be eligible to vote in the November 6th election. And just to kind of know if any of the residents have a soon-to-be 18-year-old, that's going to, that their birth date maybe falls after the cutoff date, but before the election. As long as they register before October 9th, they will be eligible to vote. So if they have a birth date that's in between the cutoff date and the election on November 6th, um, they can still vote. They would just have to register before the cutoff date. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And one of the things I wanted, I didn't mention before, and I, uh, before I go to our treasurer, or uh, Susser, I just wanted to let you know that we had an employee appreciation day last Wednesday and just for the residents so that they know, um, no city funds were used to pay for those, um, for those items that we bought for the uh, 
for the luncheon. So I, some of the residents were coming in paying their tax bills and they were probably wondering. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there so that everybody knows. Okay, um, Assessor John Delquist. Uh, Treasurer, Mr. McCullough here. Thank you, Madam Mayor and uh, Council. I just wanted to express our appreciation, the Treasurer's Office appreciation to our taxpayers for paying their taxes in a timely fashion. Our office was very, very busy. I want to express uh, appreciation to the uh, staff of the Treasurer's Office. Uh, they did a very, very good job, and uh, we're all uh, awake and smiling, and uh, we learned some things, and uh, mostly went very, very well. Very good. Thank you very much. Any department heads that would have anything they'd like to bring up for the public to know about? Our city engineer, Bill Hogan. Just like to share some updated information related to some road issues, um, not to beat up Wayne County, um, but we've had many calls regarding the uh, maintenance of the West Road Viaduct and also the eastbound lanes of King Road right there at Fort Street, deep rutting. Well, uh, both of those uh, locations are on their radar, but unfortunately won't be addressed this year and hopefully next year. Um, so they're well aware of it. But I'd like to also share a what they call their hotline number for road hazards. It's 1-888-ROAD-CREW. So 1-88-ROAD-CREW. So if we have any other complaints to the county, we can direct them to this number and they'll monitor it and put it on their schedule. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Ms. Perna's coming up to the microphone. She's our recreation director. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to invite all of our residents who um, own a dog that our 10th annual Dog Days of Summer Swim will be this Saturday at the Kennedy Aquatic Center um, from noon until 3. Registration begins at 11, um, and we will have on site pet friendly um, vendors. Um, for everybody to um, to enjoy and so come on out um, the fee is five dollars per dog and each dog must have its own handler and it's really um, an amazing um, fun event and if anyone just wants to come down just to um, come in and watch um, please do so it's it's really a lot of fun you'll certainly have a smile on your face all day um, also our registration for fall classes fitness classes skating registration are going on now um, you can register at our office at City Hall and also online at uh, trentonmi.org and then um, also wanted to bring to your attention as Mr. Lefevre talked about the Taste of Trenton is on set a Sunday September 16th in conjunction with that event is our annual Somewhere in Time event it's our 28th annual this year and this is uh, we recreate Elizabeth Park as it was back in the early 1900s it's just a nice carefree Sunday afternoon to enjoy the beautiful park and with the addition of the Taste of Trenton uh, it really is a fun event family event for everyone to enjoy and uh, uh, regarding the Taste of Trenton, they are selling pre-sale tickets for $5 at the Treasurer's Office here at City Hall. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Is there any other department heads that have anything they'd like to bring to the public? If not, um, now it's time for public comment. Anybody, anyone wishing to speak to the council, please state your name and address for the record and that you direct all the questions through the chair. We ask that you keep your comments to five minutes so that others have time for their comments also. Hi, my name is Wendy Pate. I live at 2036 Church Place in Trenton, which is located two doors from the Riverside property. And you, the last time you saw me here was on, well, it was right before 4th of July, so maybe July 2nd or something like that. Um, I wanted to say that I appreciate the council for making strides toward dealing with the Riverside property issue. I'm glad to see that it has become part of your council meetings once again. Um, but we have had another deadline that has passed, which is why I'm here today. Uh, we were told, the residents were told, that we should wait until the end of August. And we were also given that same deadline last year that we should wait till August. So we've waited till August again. And we were, uh, we met with Mr. Wagner as a community. We had some neighbors that walked the property. Um, and we had a conversation about the catch-22 that the city is in at one point we don't want to bother dr nasir too much because we want him to stay in the community but at the same time there are major issues with 
uh, how that property has been maintained. So we had that discussion and we said, we'll wait. And you haven't seen me here. You may have seen me blogging on a few places. When people comment, I have not initiated the blogging necessarily, but you have to talk about what's going on. Um, so we're here at the end of August. I can tell you some things that have been going on. We have, uh, well, obviously in the paper recently, you've seen that somebody uh, may have been arrested for trespassing. That is not the only time the police have been called in the last few months. Uh, they've been at least called three times by myself. I know that the other neighbors have also called. I've also tracked a car that had been parked there for about three or four days, had to put two and two together, figured out that they um, probably were in there most of the, of the time. I don't know if they were living there, but we got the um, the license plate and, and I hadn't seen the car since. So I also want to thank the police department for their um, utmost care when we have a complaint and we have a concern of what's going on in that property. They are always there to help us out. I can also tell you that um, at the public hearings that I've been to, I've asked multiple times for the cleanup of the property not to include the uh, application of pesticides because I feel after 10 years of neglect that that is probably not the best way to take care of a massive situation massive parking lots that have massive amounts of grass growing. Um, I did find out one day on a bike ride that uh, they were spraying chemicals on the property. Um, I had no, said this no less than three times, please make sure that that doesn't happen. I was able to get the names of the chemicals. One of them is Prosecutor, one of them was Momentum. I looked them up on the internet. One of the two is a pretty well documented, although not 100% guaranteed, human carcinogen um, that is banned in some countries. And so I was not appreciative of that. I called Dr. Or, um, Mr. Wagner and told him that that was happening um, and he would address it. However, a couple days later we saw them back. I was not home. A neighbor had let me know that they were back and um, I'm not sure what they were spraying at the time. Um, this has not controlled the weed population, funny enough. Um, there are still massive amounts of weeds on the property. And last year at this time, I asked, and I have sent emails, and I had asked that in parking lot F, there is a string of bushes that weeds have been growing in. And I think I referred to this last time. I mentioned the 80-year-old man who was sent out to pick them out by hand, and he was not able to complete the job. So if you drive on West Jefferson tonight, you will see weeds that are taller than me. And I would like to request for the last time that those weeds be removed. It's in parking lot F right on West Jefferson on the north side of the hospital. It's very easy to find, parking lot F. Now, what they have done to try to take care of this issue is they were spraying the weeds in the back parking lot of the hospital. And I asked the guys, I said, you know, why are you in the back of the parking lot? And they were laughing. They said, I don't know. All the weeds are in the front. No one even sees the back. So I agreed with them, and I chalked that up to another uh, example of how awful of a job these people do at maintaining the property and how cheaply they get it done. And I understand that they want to do as little as possible so they can maximize their profits, and yet um, they still need to do it right. And it's, it's still a mess. I have pictures. You can drive by. Feel free to do that. Mrs. Look in parking I, lot. What F. I'll do is I'll call Mr. Nasir personally tomorrow and um, talk to him about it and tell him that it needs to be taken care of. Otherwise, I'll have to get with the engineering department because it's called Noxious Weeds Ordinance. We'll Which has passed September 1st, I believe, was the date that that was we'll to be to removed. We'll have to start um, you know, ticketing at him for whatever we have to do because we can't, we've got to keep the area up. I know it's, it's been a headache. It's been a headache. I got to tell you, it's been the biggest headache for me since I've been here. So um, I will do what I can to try to, um, you know, get that cleared up yes. uh, with him. You know, I'll call him tomorrow and see what, you know, he has to say about it. Well, that is what I'd also like to bring up is how much more time you want to give him. I know you want to invite him to another meeting. That's two more weeks that we have to live with that property. We were told August 31st we're going to we're gonna have to push. You know, if, if I don't know if he's coming the 17th, if that's the next meeting. I will let you know that I talked to Henry Ford. They are um, waiting for two weeks because his attorney was reviewing the plan that um, they gave him when it came down to what he could not put in the site. 
And so we were, um, that's where we're at is two weeks. It was two weeks from last Thursday when I talked mm -hmm. to Mr. Um, Reine. And um, I hope that in two weeks time period, that's all I can tell you because this has been stringing out too long for me too. So right. um, we are going to be, I, I'm gonna go ahead and find out in two weeks time period what Dr. Nasir, he's either gotta make a decision whether he is or isn't. I mean, I don't own the property, that's the problem, you know, to just say, um, you know, exactly you know where he's going with it. but. Um, I would like to at least give you or give the uh, residents in that area some time frame because I informed Henry Ford that I wouldn't want to live by that either. So, um, you know, it, you know, I've got family. I've got um, some people around the corner there that I know. I know Ruth Ann Brewer and all the different people that live on the street. And um, I, it's time for um, it's time for an answer. So, right. I'm worried about if he says, "Oh, I'm still in it," and. I just don't want you to be fooled by him coming to a meeting and saying I'm still in it because it has been three years that he's had to worry about this problem and all of a sudden now we're at the last minute and you know you know obviously you've seen in the paper that he's also looked elsewhere in other cities I've seen it I don't I just don't trust that if he tells you once again that he's in it that he is and he will string us along as long as he can. He doesn't make decisions quickly, obviously. We've been dealing with him for three years. So I would request that the council um, ticket him to the fullest extent. Let's get, you know, his deadline is passed. August 30, we were told August is it. Then you can start complaining again. So I think everything we can do to push him in a direction, whether that be out and let's get rid of him. And then the other thing that I noticed in the News Herald article was that the Riverview City Council was talking about that same property up there on Fort and King. Yes. And um, when they were together, it didn't take them as long to decide to tear that building down. And, and they also included that the parking lot would be removed as well. well so I thought that was that an interesting approach at how they could deal with that property. Because it's one thing to tear down the building, but there's several parking lots also included in that property. Did we Mrs. have Mrs. Kate, the one yeah. thing I want to let you know is that the city of Riverview does own that property, so they can make that decision like that. Okay. Um, that's the only issue is that you know they do own it. Um, I did watch that council meeting because you can watch their council meetings on um, just like you can ours on the uh, on the um, website, and uh, I did watch that meeting to see what was being said. I did see Dr. Nasir sitting out in the crowd, so I do know that that's you know he was at that meeting. Um, there has been a change in what was going to be in there because they were looking at the um, gymna gymnastics, Down River okay. Gymnastics. Um, I will tell you that I have welcomed her into this community. We're going to try to see what, do everything we can in order to bring her business into our community. But in the meantime, I'm trying to see if I can keep Dr. Nasir to, you know, to do something with that site because I'd love to have that developed too. If not, we're gonna have to move forward on something else. So um, if you can bear with us, I know you've been bearing with us for a long time. Um, I, I am gonna call him tomorrow. Maybe he'll even give me some answers tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. But I will make a, every effort to make a conversation with him tomorrow and um, see what we can do to find out where he lies with uh, where he's at with the uh, you know the property. And the last thing I'd just like to note is that I do have a copy of the blighted property um, things that he needs to keep up and just to highlight things weed shall be removed along the perimeter of buildings, fence lines, parking lots, landscape beds, which includes the parking lot that I was referring to. The retaining walls need to be structurally sound. We have a retaining wall in our backyard that could use some tuck pointing. Um, there's so much to be done. Graffiti, there is vulgar graffiti on the south side. Took uh, pictures of it Yes. we showed him. Okay, yes. great, that has so. not been removed. There's so much broken glass should be re secured by replacement, reglazing. They're supposed to paint the boards that they put up to the matching color of the building. We've let this go. We've got to start making him responsible for this and get that deadline nailed down, and, you know, and, and don't let him continue. He's not going to do anything with uh, this property. I really appreciate Thank your you. comments, and we will um, do, I'll try to get a hold of him tomorrow and see where he lies with, uh, if he's going to make, you know, any kind of decision or has made any decision, and also to um, get the uh, parking lot um, cleaned up there. Um, Is it possible for new business to, for the, I don't know how you get it on your agenda to talk about it so we don't have to continue to wait to then put it on the next two week agenda and this and so forth when you find out something is it something that council can just bring up randomly does it have to be on 
Uh, maybe well, we could I request think, um, to put it on the agenda. Everything, yeah, the, everything that we do here, we try, like we just got this one uh, memo t this evening from Henry Ford Health Systems in regards to what he can't do. I just got this between uh, five o'clock when I left here today and seven o'clock when I got here this, this evening. So uh, this was one of the things that um, did come through, but I'll be glad to, you know, I was trying to inform you, on, you know, through email and stuff like that as to when I first um, started and, and then there wasn't anything that was really going on. So, um, but I will be glad to, I've got your email too, so that you can spread the word with your neighbors. Um, we can give reports almost every meeting when it comes to, you know, being on TV so the residents can see. So it's not, um, you know, necessary for them to come down. I know that it's getting to be a very long process with this. So um, I would, you know, like to, uh, you know, I'm giving you my word. I'm trying to do everything in my power to get rid of this, you know, you know, problem. So, <laughs> so. Okay. And well, Halloween is coming up. We might need some beefed up um, support security. for that. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Typher. I, I just want to make sure we clarify one thing. The city council has no power on this. We have none. Only administration, city engineer, can condemn that property. They can cite them. We could talk and you know what, Wendy, you watched us talk. We talk and talk. We're as frustrated as you are. Not as personally, we don't have to face it, but the truth is the city council as a group has no power to start condemnation on that property. I would venture to say if we had that power, that thing would be gone right now. I just Administrator, um, Madam Mayor, I just want to inform uh, the people out there that last week, uh, Mr. Long and Mr. Hogan and I had a discussion relative to Riverside Hospital, and I instructed Mr. Long to, uh, to find an environmental attorney uh, relative to the issue, and I also instructed Mr. Hogan to find a firm outside of the city of Trenton to assess the Riverside Hospital as for its ability to stand on its own if this deal would have failed. So we should have something coming in the, in the near future from Mr. Long and Mr. Hogan on that regard. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman McLeod. What does that mean? What does that, you wanna hire an environmental lawyer to do what? We were going to exp discuss with an environmental lawyer what obligations previous owners have and what our ability would be to force the current owners to participate in the, the demolition of that site if necessary. That was one. And secondly, we were going to have Mr. Hogan look for an outside firm because the city of Trenton obviously would have double jeopardy in it that would assess the property and say that it should be demolished, it's not re uh, rehabable or can be redeveloped. Uh, you mean absent some environmental cleanup? Yes. Well, when that property was sold the first time, was the MDEQ involved at all? No, but the Henry Ford Health Systems did do a basic environmental assessment and passed it on to the first owner. Do we have a copy of that? I do not. In fact, um, we're trying to get a copy of the deed. Uh, we've been working over the past week with uh, the County Register of Deeds to get a copy of the deed so we can find out just exactly who has owned that property in the last few years. Most of that information is online. Uh, we tried that. But uh, so we've been talking as, as a matter of fact today, the assistant city treasurer was on the, firm, on the phone uh, for me a couple of times getting, trying to get some information. We did receive some information. It's not exactly what uh, Mr. Long and I are looking for. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council? If not. So moved. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported to adjourn at 920. Thank you. Kyle. Kyle.